Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Balanced Druids in the up-and-coming expansion, Shadowlands. Balanced Druids have struggled to find their footing in the meta for a few seasons now, having relatively weak dots and their generators Lunar Strike and Wrath barely doing any damage at all. Well, now in Shadowlands, our favorite owls are getting a sense of direction, buffed eclipses, stronger dots, powerful off-healing, and even more CC. So we've got in touch with rank 1 balance druid and highest druid in Europe, Oxy, to share his thoughts on how balance is looking going forward along with all the information you need to set up your own boomkin ready for the sinful arena season 1. We'll be taking a look at races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and even legendaries. However, this guide has been made using the current beta build, and we'll be releasing a refresher guide once season 1 begins and things are more solidified which will cover any outdated information within this guide along with a more in-depth look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even discussing which comps are best. So don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and ring that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. To kick things off, let's take a look at some of the major changes Balanced Druids are undergoing in Shadowlands. For the most part, balance to the core remains the same, but with two major changes. Starfall is now once again a buff that deals damage and hits anything you are in combat with and in line of sight of. More importantly though, the second change is that Eclipses are making a return. If you've played previous iterations of Boomkin, you might know what these are, but if you haven't, there are two Eclipses, Solar and Lunar. When in Solar Eclipse, the cast time of Wrath is reduced and its damage is increased. This then gets further buffed for each Star Surge used during your Eclipse. And then in Lunar Eclipse, the cast time of your Starfire is reduced, and Critical Strike chance is increased. Again, this effect is strengthened by every Star Surge you use during it. Beyond that, Celestial Alignment or Incarnation gives you the benefit of both Eclipses while active. This is a great addition as currently both Lunar Strike and Wrath are almost not even worth casting in BFA. There have also been some nice quality of life changes including Cyclone being made baseline and the newly improved affinities, but more on this later. In regards to the playstyle of Boomkin, it again remains for the most part the same. You maintain your Dots, Moonfire, and Sunfire, and then use Cyclone to control the pace of the game, utilizing instant CC like Bash or Root Beam to lock up healers before bursting with Star Surges. Overall, this provides a nice mix of damage, utility, CC, and burst. So that begs the question, how is Balance doing in Shadowlands right now? Well, overall Moonkin is in a good spot. One of its major drawbacks in BFA was its lack of consistent damage, with Moonfire and Sunfire feeling like they did nothing at all. In recent beta builds, this was addressed and both dots received some big buffs, making Balance have some decent sustained damage to go along with the high impact instant burst of Star Surge. For our last question, we asked Oxy what he thinks should be nerfed or buffed going into Shadowlands. His response that while Star Surge and your dot damage is decently strong, the damage provided by the newly added Eclipses are still not where he would like them to be, still being underwhelming and not really rewarding casting during your Eclipses. And honestly, this is a fair point. If you're able to freely cast, you should be rewarded for doing so. A simple change would be to buff the damage of both Starfire and Wrath or even buffing their Astral Power generation. As it stands, both reward very little. Overall though, Balanced Druids are set to be in a much better spot than in BFA. Alright, with the overview out of the way, up next we're going to be taking a look at all the information that you need to get started with your own Balanced Druid starting with which race to pick. But first, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Anyway, if you're playing Alliance, there's only one real choice and that is Night Elf. Night Elves offer one of the strongest racials in the form of Shadow Melt, which can be used in multiple ways such as allowing you to avoid hard hitting spells, avoid CC, or just as a way to dip out of combat, jump into cat form, and go into prowl. Then for Horde, we recommend Torrent. While at a first glance Torrent may seem weak when compared to Troll, but the utility provided by War Stomp is just unrivaled as you can easily use it to secure a Cyclone on demand. Troll does offer a more damage oriented alternative, giving you Berserk which in turn increases your cast speed for a short time. This racial has seen a few nerfs from its previous iteration, but undeniably offers more in terms of raw damage. Moving on, let's take a look at the talent tree and cover which talents offer the most for Arena. Starting on the level 15 row, the best choice without question is going to be Nature's Balance, providing you with a passive amount of astral power generation while in combat, on top of also giving you 50 astral power to start off a game, allowing for much more explosive openers. Dropping down on the level 25 row, you've got two options. First of all is Renewal, 
Renewal is an extremely powerful defensive which heals you for 30% of your max HP. This combined with bear form and frenzied regeneration is why balanced druids are so inherently hard to kill and should be your default pick for most scenarios. Alternatively, wild charge can be picked up if you believe that you're in a matchup where you're either not going to be focused or value mobility over an extra defensive. Then on the level 30 row, we have the choice between the newly buffed affinities. These affinities were buffed to give one new spell each. Feral gets Maim, Guardian gets Incapacitating Roar, and Restoration Affinity gets Ursul's Vortex. While these are all nice additions, the standard go-to here will be Guardian Affinity. This provides you with a passive damage reduction and the use of Frenzied Regeneration. Without Guardian Affinity, if you get focused, you're not going to have a good time. Not to mention, now with the newly added Incapacitating Roar, you can use this to make securing Cyclones a lot easier. In some cases where you know for sure that you're not going to be the target and there is no potential swaps to you, then the added off healing provided by the restoration affinity is nice. But you lose added CC, so it's very niche that you'll ever want to drop Guardian. Moving down another talent row to the level 35 options, we have the choice between the newly added Heart of the Wild, Mass Entanglement, and Mighty Bash. While Heart of the Wild is a great new addition and very fun to play with, both Mass Entanglement and even Bash are so vital to a balanced Druid's crowd control. How this role works is, in the majority of games, you'll want Mass Entanglement. If you're unable to make use of it, however, for instance, the enemy team has a Druid Healer or multiple freedoms to counter Root Beam, then selecting Mighty Bash is the second best option. For the level 40 row, there is no other option than Incarnation Chosen of Elune. This row makes our big damage CD even stronger and even now gives 10% critical strike with the introduction of Shadowlands. It's a clear choice. On the penultimate talent row, Twin Moons is easily the best choice. It allows for not only easier dot upkeep, but also buffs the damage of Moonfire, which is one of our Balanced Druid's three highest damage sources. And last up on our final talent row, Solstice is our recommended choice. This makes your shooting stars fall 300% more often after entering an Eclipse or using Incarnation. This not only does good damage, but also supplies a steady income of Astral Power, and once again is a clear winner. So with that concluded, it's time to now move on to our PvP talents. There have been a few new additions when it comes to PvP talents in Shadowlands. As mentioned, Cyclone is now also baseline, which opens up a talent slot. Our three default talents we recommend are firstly Celestial Guardian. This not only reduces magical damage you take while in bear form, but also increases the healing that you take by 20%. With bear form being your main defensive, this is a nice addition. The second of our three default talents is going to be Moonkin Aura. This again is good in all scenarios, adding spell critical strike chance which stacks up after you cast Star Search. This benefits not only your own damage, but also your teammates damage or healing. Then lastly, we've got two options. Thorns is the clear winner whenever you can make use out of it. If they have a melee, pick Thorns. Very simple. It's nice added damage and often acts as a pseudo defensive. If you're not facing a melee, however, your next best pick is going to be the newly added High Winds. This reduces the damage that your target does for 4 seconds after you cyclone them. This is just some nice added utility built into your CC. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the new additions to the game added with Shadowlands, which are Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendary Items. First of all, let's begin with Covenant Choice. While some classes have a few decent options to pick between, for Balanced Druids, it's very clear cut, and Kyrian is head and shoulders above the rest. The main reason for this is the Kindred Spirits class ability. What this does for Balanced Druids is give you a static 15% damage increase, usable every one minute. Why this is so powerful is that it lines up with the Balanced Druids main CC with Solar Beam or Bash both being on a one minute CD as well. Not to mention that Kyrian offers some great Soulbind options to go alongside all of that, which we'll get to next. So, now that you've sided with the Curians, it's time to pick a Soulbind. Soulbinds are essentially skill trees that you progress through as you journey through Shadowlands, providing mostly passive bonuses. There are three Soulbinds available for the Curians, which you can see here. The best choice here is to bind with Pelagos. Pelagos provides two very strong Soulbind abilities. First is the File of Patience. This makes your File of Serenity heal you for an additional 35% and turns it into a healing over time effect. If you're confused what the File of Serenity is, then it's the Curian Covenant ability, which gives you a sort of empowered healthstone which can be used to remove all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds. Beyond that, we have Combat Meditation. When using your Curian class ability, which we covered earlier, this also gives you a bonus to mastery. 
so just more burst on a 1 minute CD, which again lines up with your CC. The other noteworthy ability here is going to be Let Go of the Past, which just provides a small boost to versatility. Our recommended route looks like this. Now you may have noticed that there are a few gaps. Well, these are filled in with what's known as a conduit. Conduits are split into three categories, endurance, potency, and finesse. Selecting the route from above, we're able to pick two potency conduits, one endurance and one finesse. The first conduit slot is finesse, and for this we want to pick up tireless pursuit. This allows you to keep the speed increased from cat form or travel form after you leave it, which is great for some added mobility and to build distance. Our next open slot is an endurance conduit, and for this the recommended pick is going to be tough as bark. All this does is reduce the cooldown of our main defensive, which is bark skin. Finally, we have two potency conduits. These mainly add to your offensive abilities, and the two best for balance right now are Fury of the Skies and Umbral Intensity. The latter makes your eclipses stronger, giving you a 20% boost to either Starfire or Wrath once you enter an eclipse, whereas Fury of the Skies makes your Moonfire increase the arcane damage the target takes, and Sunfire increases the nature damage they take. So this will leave our completed Soulbind tree looking like this. Then last but not least, let's talk legendaries. Legendaries are again back into the game. This time though, there is a new selection and they all work in Arena. Currently, you're only able to equip one at any time, but this may change in the future. Out of all the options available, the best is going to be Circle of Life and Death. Being able to be crafted on either a ring or head, this legendary power causes your damage over time effects to deal their damage in 25% less time. This just plays very well into the balanced druid playstyle and adds considerably to your overall pressure and damage over time. All right, everybody, that's going to conclude our first look at balanced druids in the up and coming expansion Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates on the information you saw in this guide, plus a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even what your best compositions are. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.